or to a third party without your express written consent, then most certainly you can sue your GSM operator for unauthorized disclosure of your data. Even as you mentioned, with regards to the security, the police, et cetera, there is a process mm. to getting your, those data. It's not just to walk in and say, give me the data of such and such a person. Because then how do you verify, you know, it's not for personal reasons that I'm coming to get this, this information. So they are very good at following a process, which they have in place at the moment, which is why it's always mentioned, even if I want my own data, I have to go all the way to the IDP to get approval before I can get it. So the GSM operators are very protective about the information that they get from their subscribers. Even sometimes when we request certain data, they're like, no, data protection. And we're like, look, we're the regulator. We can get the information for the following reasons. So data protection, as we said, s registration has been happening. You know, Gamsel used to do it. You know, you have Gamtel, you have the ISPs and the and GSMs for postpaid, and there's never been any case of anybody's data being or not the being disclosed without the, the consent of the subscriber. So it's not a concern that we have. We've been doing an audit of all their systems for the past two weeks to make sure that they are secure enough to handle the data that's going to be put in there, and they have very few people who can have access to that data. They've spent millions of dollars in upgrading their systems to make sure that they can handle this and they're very secure. Because remember, for a GSM operator, if I cannot guarantee the security of the data of my subscribers, I will lose them. We have four GSM operators, competition is tight. So everybody wants to make sure that they can keep who they have at the moment. But to answer your question, yes, you can sue them. It's not something that we anticipate to happen with the SIM card registration. We've been doing a lot of training for the customer care, for the GSM operators, and we've also told the GSM operators that this is an opportunity to find out those who do not mind their data being shared and those who mind their data being shared. Because you want to have your market surveys. You want to know, are people happy with the quality of service? Are people happy with the services that they have? What more do people want? So one of the best ways to be able to conduct those surveys now is to ask them when you're registering them, do you mind if we share your data with a third party, yes or no? And then you have your list of subscribers who say, go ahead and share it, and we have a list who says no. So if you're contacted, it would be because you allowed for them to contact you. When do you share somebody's personal data and to whom? When? Well, like we said, that's up to the JSON operators. Criminal cases? That's different. Um, now let's, let's, okay. let's, let's get that angle. For criminal cases, what we have with the task force that we have with the immigration, the and Ministry of Interior, is mm -hmm. that we're, we're trying to come up, co come up with a standard uh, form you know, sort of saying that, you know, uh, the following person of the following rank in the police or et cetera is authorized to get the details of the following telephone number and would, of course, be signed by a very, either a magistrate or signed by a judge or signed by, you know, a, a very high ranking person in the personnel. It would be a warrant, basically, to search that data. Uh, but that, like I said, there's a very clear process that's followed, you know, so we can't just walk in and say, give me these details because I want it. The GSM operators in the task force raise that as a concern to say, we're collecting all this data, but we need to know that we can also be protected in how we give it out. And also the ministry has been very concerned to make sure they follow the right process because you know we are all affected one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So that's not a concern of ours. Um, it's been happening since time in memorial and there's been no issue there. So we don't expect it to be um, an issue now. All right, Lamin, uh, I'm calling you Lamin because your surname is Sima, and there was one Lamin Sima who was my classmate, sorry about that. But solo, the advantages of registering your SIM card, I know they are enormous, but for the sake of those viewing this program, please, let's have... Thank you. I think, um, yeah, I'll just follow up from what you've been discussing here. The advantages, that's why if, um, if you look at all the sensitization that Pura is doing, we are concentrating on the personal security as opposed to the, the, the other security aspects. Mm -hmm. Because these are apparatus, like you said, the government apparatus, they have their own systems in place that can do their own tracking and their own, which is separate from what the whole intention of identifying and registering and, and, and identifying numbers and, regis and registering numbers to individuals. Mm -hmm. The personal security issue, which is what people are telling us, is why they think they want to subscribe to the whole idea, is that you know they are the ones that are affected me and you we are the ones that get these text messages we are the ones that get these calls the silent calls we are the ones that get the insulting calls it's the general public it's us and you know and interestingly enough the other day i was listening to watching um grts and i saw an element of the kind where they were talking about sim card where pe people will do random number calls and just call somebody and you pick up and then they'll pretend that they, they don't want they want to speak to somebody else other than you 
just to get you to be talking to them. So these are the kind of things that are happening. These are things that affect that are affecting people. So this is what we want to um, we want to stop. We don't want these SIM cards lying about idly where people can put money in them, insult people, and take them out and throw them away. We want people to use their lines by all means for anything and everything that they want to use it for, as long as it is responsible, uh, as long as it doesn't infringe on others. These are the kinds of things that the, the, the that, that I would say are the biggest benefits in terms of uh, what SIM card registration is aimed at, wha why we want to do it. If you go to the, the, the Arab countries, probably they'll tell you SIM card registration is to curb okay. terrorism. If you go to the European countries, they'll probably tell you we want to do it because people detonate bombs uh, using, using, using mobile phones. If you come to Africa, somewhere like Kenya, they'll tell you we want to do it because of security for people's finances, because people transfer money through phones. So these are all things, and, and convergence means people are doing more and more stuff on the phone, on the phone, and as opposed to sitting at internet cafes where it used to be, now people can be on the move and be doing things on their phones and SIM cards, which is fine. We are saying we are not restricting, we are not asking nobody to, to, to do anything that they feel that they want to do, as long as it's something that they're doing, it's not infringing on people, and it's not something that is going to be a bother or a burden on somebody else. If it's criminal, it's a whole separate area where the police, of course, have their jurisdictions and they know how to deal with stuff like that. So this is stuff. So the reason why we're saying, and we keep reiterating, it's personal, it's personal, it's personal. Right. Um, I'm going to take you to a scenario where somebody here within the boundaries of the Gambia uses a number synonymous to one in London mm -hmm. and call somebody in the Gambia this 419 stuff. They are actually here. They call you with a number which is so foreign you think this person is calling you from a distant land and the person is here. Those calls coming to me, can they be traced? Absolutely. Because you know, if you, if you look at technology, uh, the reason why we have SIM cards, these things can be identified through networks. Because if you make a call, you are using a particular network that has to terminate on another network that terminates on another. So it means there is trail. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the funny thing is, I even if there is trail, but there is no identity at the end of the line, then it means it can be a wild goose chase of people just using these numbers and then just throwing them away. It's not the fact that it cannot be traced. The fact is it cannot be identified to a person. So that is the, that is the difficulty that we have. As of now, we, no, we know people are receiving. I'm receiving emails, as I speak to you, where people will tell me I won one million pounds. We even went as far as going to the papers to say this is not true. Mm. And people are being targeted who are working in financial institutions. The young Gambians that work as tellers in, Gamb in, in some, some financial institutions that we have are being targeted, where they, they're being enticed and given, say, $100 up front to say, I'm your friend. And then they take this money thinking somebody is a fool somewhere when they're being enticed. And at the end of the day, that person will send them an urgent message to say, I'm stranded somewhere, can you send me $5,000 and I'll give it back as soon as I get in Gambia and stuff like that. So these are things that are happening. These are real things that are affecting people. And these are things that SIM card registration, like I just said, might not necessarily completely eliminate, but it will go a long way in alleviating the problems that people encounter with regards. We are made to understand that postpaid subscribers have been registering their SIM cards for a long time now. Now, what's the difference between the prepaid uh, registration process and the postpaid registration process? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's basically the same. It's basically the same. All what you need is to, because before, like, um, address location was the problem mm. for these GSM operators. Some of them will say, I live in Bako Newtown or something. But with the advent of this new uh, biometric ID card or uh, voter's card, like with the voter's card, they can even tell you which constituency or whichever location you are, where you voted. So the address identification was a major problem or a major issue. But you know they have a way that they can easily track someone and exactly where you live as far as these identifications are concerned. Which we won't be doing because that's not the purpose it's of the, it's not the, of the yeah. registration. I Somewhere think along the line, we are told that only criminals are afraid of SIM card. Numbers. Absolutely, exactly. absolutely. I think let us let us let us talk about that. I think that's that's exactly it. You know, when we start talking about this, because most of us use our phones, for we Just are using our phones now for for the reasons of you using it for, and we'll continue using it regardless of SIM card registration in exactly the same way. 
if we call people just to uh, to, 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 to do